Satu. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, and Peace Upon You. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable the Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, University of Mataram, Dr. Andus Lalu Zulkifli, MSI, PhD. The Honorable Head of English Education Program, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, University of Mataram, Dr. Santi Farmasari, MED TISOL. The Honorable Head of Chemistry Education Program, University of Mataram. The Honorable all the lectures and the respectable participants. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the public lecture. First of all, let's thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us mercies and blessings so we can attend this webinar and the following agenda of our event. Secondly, salawat and salam always be given to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who has guided us from the darkness to the lightness. It is a wonderful and precious chain for me, Audi Yuliandini, to be your mistress of the ceremony on this very special occasion. GBS UA Teacher Education Trifocal Approach to Quality Teaching, Learning, and Future Thinking, addressing the gaps during the pandemic and exploring possibilities of new realities and uncertainties. Ladies and gentlemen, our event today is guided as the following agenda. For the first agenda is opening. The second agenda is opening speech. The fourth agenda will be the main agenda, which is pre presentation of the lecture by Dr. Darrell Ocampo. The next agenda will be photo session of public lecture. And the last agenda is closing of public lecture. For the first agenda, let's open this event by reciting Basmalah together. The next agenda is sing the Indonesian National Anthem and the Philippine National Anthem. For the participants, please stand up.
participants, please sit back. The third agenda is speech will be delivered by the Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, University of Mataram, Dr. Andus Lalu Zulkifli, MSI, PhD. Time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat sore dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua Good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, Lecturer also student Alhamdulillah we can gather this afternoon for a public lecture by our distinguished uh, guest, Dr. Darrell from the College of Development Education, Central Baikal State University of Education, with uh, the topic of uh, CBSUA, Teacher Education, Trifocal Approach to Equality Teaching Learning and Teaching Thinking, addressing the gap during the pandemic and exploring the possibilities of new realities and uncertainties. This is uh, the part of the program, uh, the International Credit Transfer Program and Academic Visit. First of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Daniel and your delegation, our student here from the Philippines. Uh, welcome to the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education of Mataram University. Actually, we have already uh, met several days ago, okay? And, of course, uh, uh, it is our honor to Dr. Darrell to take your time to visit our faculty and also to share your experience in terms of uh, research about the trifocal approach to quality teacher teaching, learning, and future thinking. Maybe this approach not only applicated to the, this uh, kind of problem, but also another uh, aspect of our education. So, um, I hope that uh, this lecture will give an uh, opportunity to our students and to our staff to get, uh, I mean, uh, take time to discuss Okay, and then um, also for our lecture, uh, maybe uh, we'll discuss about the collaborative research yeah, related to the this, uh, I mean, approach, uh, education trifocal approach to quality teaching, learning, and the future thinking. And then um, uh, secondly, also, I would like to address my highest gratitude to the head of the English uh, study program, Dr. Santi. Is it present now, Dr. Santi? And also Dr. Junaidi, uh, the chair and secretary of the Faculty of Teacher Training Education in International Cooperation, Dr. Imam Batia, and also uh, Dr. Lalu Teli, uh, for all their effort, time, so that the exchange of literature and student credit transfer program can be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, achieves yeah, uh, today. And also a special appreciation to Dr. Junaidi. I think uh, Dr. Junaidi who has uh, carried out his duty well, both when accompanying our student, yeah, accompanying our student to Philippines and also currently accompanying our guest lecture also here with our student. So, excellent and great job for Pak Junaidi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
deterred think that I, am, I have to say, especially for our students here in Faculty of Peer Training, especially for from uh, uh, English program, because uh, now our student from uh, Philippines, apa uh, maksud saya untuk mahasiswa-mahasiswa yang ada di sini, tolong berinteraksi dengan mahasiswa-mahasiswa dari Filipina sehingga mereka bisa nyaman di sini. Ya. So I said to our students in here uh, in uh, faculty in this faculty that uh, I, I encourage him, I encourage uh, her and to interact with you. Okay. So if, and then if you have any problem, don't be hesitate to say something to them. Okay. I think uh, that's uh, very important. So uh, the purpose you come here in studying uh, can be cheap. Okay. And then um, one thing that uh, I have to uh, report here for all of you is uh, so we have uh, two kind of uh, collaboration uh, in the next year. First is the English instruction training for UNAM lecture. This will be done by the lecture from the US from CB yeah, from CBSUA. This is very long name. In CFB. Okay. Then the second uh, program that maybe this year, this year, yeah. research collaborative, co research collaboration between lecture. So we have two kind of uh, uh, program that we can uh, do this year. And also next year, uh, there will be a joint degree between CBS UA and UNA. So uh, I hope that this uh, lecture from Dr. Darrell will be uh, very important for us in in order to increase our academic knowledge and also especially regarding to the education and teaching, specifically uh, this method, very focal approach to quality teaching learning. And then, of course, we hope that uh, this activity also will give support to our study program in terms of accreditation. So I think uh, that's all that I want to say. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for Dr. Andos Lalu Zulkifli, MSI, PhD. The next agenda will be moved to the main agenda, which is public lecture. I will give the moderator as the director of the public lecture, Mr. Ahmad Junaidi, SPD, MI, MA, PhD. Time is yours. Thank you um, for the mistress of ceremony. Is that the right way of saying that? Okay, because I just indicate the gender there. Okay, that kind of conversation. Okay, that's a very um, weird opening to a public lecture. But let me first thank uh, our uh, wonderful dean here for supporting the visit of the CBSUA. Can we get a very special applause <laughs> for the dean? And then I would like to acknowledge the presence of the head of the uh, postgraduate of the English education, Dr. Amin. I hope, yes. And then the head of the, I would say, the one who is responsible for the internationalization of our faculty, Dr. Imam over there. I would like to especially acknowledge the presence of the wonderful students of the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. Welcome to the Faculty of Education. <laughs> and the last but not the least, my
partner and now my friend and also the guardian when I was there, yeah, Dr. Darrell Ocampo here. I would just go straight to why we're having this public lecture, okay? You're the students of the English education uh, program, most of you, um, and then some of you are from the other majors as well. There are process, there are requirements that you fulfilled for coming here. You're not here just because of random uh, circumstance, you're here because you have a reason to be here. And now we're going to talk about this admission and also the factors influencing how we uh, manage the teacher education. This very general take that will be talked about and then I'm also curious about the trifocal approach. I understand trifocal as the meeting point of three focus length like in a sunglasses so you have the, the short vision and the middle vision and also the the, the far vision. I think it has something to do with how we plan things in the short term, the middle term, the long term. But maybe I'm wrong. So I would say I would I would try again my uh, Filipino uh, skill. Okay. So can I still say um, magandang hapon, magayon and guapos? Is that the right way of saying that? Okay. I just say good afternoon, you beautiful creature the handsome and the beautiful students and teachers of everyone is coming here. So I would like first to introduce our great uh, lecturer here. Dr. Darrell Ocampo is an English language professor at Central Bicol State University of Agriculture under the College of Development Education. He is a graduate of Bachelor of Education of English, same as me, and he took up his Master's of Arts in Education major in English language teaching. He pursued a degree in Doctor of Philosophy major in Language and Literacy, Dev Literacy Development, where he ventured in the field of Metapragmatics. Anyone who studied linguistics, you will know that later. His research interests are linguistics, pragmatics, stylistics, and discourse analysis. He is associate member of National Research Council of the Philippines and a member of National Committee on Language and Trans Translation under the National Commission of Culture and Arts in the Philippines. He published his research works in different international peer-reviewed journals and presented his works in different language-related fora. Later he, this August, he will be presenting his paper on metapragmatics at the prestigious Asia or Asia TEFL Forum, which will be conducted in South Korea. So we wish you luck for the very prestigious uh, forum, Dr. Daryl Acampo. And now it's time for you to share to us the CBS UA's approach and traffical approach to quality teaching and learning and future thinkings. Time is, and space is yours. Take it away. You can just take that. Okay, yeah. okay. okay yes. Um, right, so we will have some time first to introduce the students before uh, re uh, going to the main lecture. And then, uh, Sir, Sir Fuad, I think I already shared the file for the presentation in the WhatsApp web, in your WhatsApp. Thank you. Um, do you, okay, yes. Hello. Sir, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We are very glad to be here this afternoon. I, I am Dr. Dara Lembocampo, as introduced by Dr. Zonaidi, and I will serve as your lecturer. Uh, first, first thing first, I am very happy that we are here, finally here at Indonesia, amidst the humps and bumps of the long travel. Uh, finally, uh, we meet the beautiful people of Indonesia, the beautiful students, the faculty of University uh, Universitas Mataram. Um, if I will be completely honest, if I will be completely honest, um, when it comes to food, okay, so uh, our our cook always prepares spicy food. 
<laughs> and I, I said I said to Dr. Jeanette that it's okay, it's tolerable because in our country, particularly in our region, we love spicy food. But not on a daily basis. <laughs> but that's okay. Then, as to the accommodation, um, I am also very happy. Why? Because you made us feel that we are one step closer to our home. Indeed, home away from home. And I think we owe you that. So thank you very much for your uh, warm accommodation, for your smile, amidst the fact that we came from different country, amidst the fact that we have geographical divide, amidst the language barrier, um, with this kind of camaraderie, with this kind of partnership, indeed I can say that uh, our hearts beat us one. And with that I am very happy and um, fulfilled going here at UNRAM. And I have a lot of stories to tell to my students, to the faculty of CBSUA. And I also mentioned this one. The name of our university is quite long. Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. So how many words, right? Then for, for easier recall, you, just, you can just say CBSUA. Okay? So that's the name of our university. Now, I have with me my students. Uh, by the way, I'm also very happy that uh, I saw again my students back, back in CBSUA, the 10 UNRAM students. Can you stand for recognition? We have there Dia, Harris, stand up for recognition. They were the 10 lucky ones who went, ah, uh, two. The, uh, the rest I don't know where they are. Perhaps they are having their classes. They are the lucky ones who went to CBSUA and experienced the CBSUA way. Okay? Now, this afternoon, I have also my students, 10 students, who are in their uh, fourth semesters, second year. And uh, I would like them to introduce themselves for you to remember them as well, in the same way that we remember the 10 students who went uh, to, to, to CBSUA. So, can I call one by one Ms. Uh, uh, Rodores, Ms. Ruadiel, Ms. Perez? Mr. Aljun, Ms. Kelsey, Ms. Tan, and Ms. Ivy. For your introduction, please. Good afternoon. Hello, selamat siang. Saya Aliana Miradores. Um, sebagai salah satu mahasiswa pertukaran um, pelajar dari Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Filipina. Saya sangat senang dan bersyukur bisa berada di sini uh, bersama Anda semuanya. <laughs> Terima kasih. Hi, good afternoon everyone or should I say selamat siang. My name is Kaila F. Rajal, 20 years of age, age, taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. And it's nice meeting you all, guys. And I hope in the long run, we can be all close and be friends so that we can build a good relationship together. That's all. Thank you. Good afternoon. Salamat siyang to the dean, rectors, members of the faculty, staff, professors, and students of Universitas Matara. I am Apple Perez. You can call me Apple. And I am under the College of Development Education. As we stay here for a month, um, I am hoping for a much collaborative and harmonious relationship with you guys. And I can wait to learn more about the culture of Mataram, Indonesia, and hopefully share our wonderful experiences that we have. Please do take care of us. Thank you. Terima kasih. Salamat siyang, everyone. I am Marielle B. Alana. You can call me Mar Marie. Uh, my Indonesian friends call me Marie. It's easier to pronounce than Marielle. I, too, is having a hard time to pronounce my name, so that is why <laughs> you can call me Marie. And I am looking forward to collaborating and learning with you all, and I am excited to be part of this academic institution. That is all. Thank you, Terima kasih. Selamat siang, semuanya. Is that right? <laughs> so, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mark June Olieres Arales, but you can call me Marky for short, and that's pretty easier than Mark June. I am a second year secondary education student, major in science, but I think I will be enrolled here in chemistry education, and I can't wait to be friends with all of you. 
I would be very glad to hear from you guys. Thank you so much. So hi everyone, salamat, salamat siyang wonderful and chantic people. <laughs> I am <laughs> I am June Kalsikiyasa, yeah, and you can call me June or Kathy. And I am from uh, English major, and I would love to know more about you guys. And I already have. I already gained friends already, and it's them. Nice to meet you. They're also nice, and I would like to, I would like to meet a lot more. And that's all. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Salamat siyang. I am Chris Pila Estan, but you can call me Chris. I am 19 and a second-year college student taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education at CBSUA. And nice meeting you all. I'm looking forward to be friends to all of you. That will be all. So good afternoon, everyone. Salamat siyang. I am Ivy Marie Alnidea. I am 21 years old, and I am currently taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English. And I would like to say thank you for the warm accommodation. And I could now feel the warm, um, warm welcome from all of you. So I hope that we can um, collaborate more and to learn each culture and tradition. And that would be all. Thank you very much. So I think that's it. These are my uh, my ten, uh, ten students. Nine students are uh, sorry, nine right? Nine students. Eight students are sorry. Eight students. Seven of them. Uh, the concentration is English language. The other one is a science major. So they, you will have a long, a long time with them because they will be staying here at Unram for a month, 26, 26 days. So I hope you can build a good relationship. Don't you worry, they don't bite. They are kind, <laughs> okay? So thank you so much, students. And I think someone took the spotlight already for speaking in your local language or in Bahasa Indonesia. Don't expect me to, to, to speak Bahasa Indonesia because I find it difficult to, to, to learn your language. Even though I have, I actually have a brother here. He's in Jakarta. Okay, so uh, I hope that we can build stronger relationship. And with my students here, I hope that they can get along with you. Thank you so much, students. Thank you so much, everyone. So I think we're all ready, and I hope you are ready to listen to to my discussion this afternoon. Actually, when I texted or when I messaged Sir Jeanette about my lecture this afternoon, I told him that I would love to have, you know, a smaller circle when it comes to the participants because I want my lecture to be collaborative. I want my lecture to, to gain feedback coming from my audience. It doesn't really require a big audience because my topic is, um, it's on infant stage. Why infant stage? Because this is actually a research proposal which I hope both of us, your, uh, your university and the faculty of, college, uh, faculty of Education and my faculty can share something about it. It has something to do with the student's welfare. In particular, how you learn and how um, the College of Education here in Unrom manages to select okay, the students. That means the student admission up, uh, upon uh, receiving and identifying the students, uh, how do you provide the experiences to your students um, with their stay here at UNRAM? Then upon providing quality learning spaces for them, how do you provide? How do you um, uh, see or see, uh, see through um, those who are qualified for graduation? Hence, trifocal approach. There are three uh, main approaches that I will be discussing about my, my topic. My topic is CBSUA Teacher Education's trifocal approach to quality teaching and, le uh, teaching and learning and features thinking, addressing the gaps during the pandemic, and exploring possibilities of new realities and uncertainties. I know that um, on your side, on your perspective, it might sound quite long. Or not quite, it's really long, right? But if we're going to dichotomize the, the title, let's try to analyze, let's try to break down, okay, my title. So we have our CBSUA Teacher Education Trifocal Approach. Basically, it will talk about the experiences, okay, the things we do 
at Central Bicol State University of Agriculture to our students. That's why I told Sir Jeanette yesterday, as much as possible, I would like to have, aside from the students, faculty teachers, I mean fa faculty or teachers coming from the Faculty of Education so that we can share experiences. I will be sharing with you what we do at CBSUA, okay? Uh, why trifocal approach? Trifocal approach, the same with what Sir Jeanette said a while ago, because it will observe three major processes. Students admission. How were you selected by the university? In particular, uh, the faculty of college of I mean the faculty of education. Okay, that talks about students' admission. The second approach is the students' experience. Once you are admitted at UNRAM, what are the things provided by the university to you? Particularly when it comes to learning, or for instance, in your field of concentration, English. What are the different activities provided? What are the different learning experiences being shared to you by the faculty? Not only by, by, by in terms of learning, but at the same time with the facilities. And all other things needed for you to say that you can be a competitive graduate. Okay? That's the second approach. The last approach, qualifications for graduation. What are the things we do at CBSUA for us to qualify our graduates for, you know, graduation? To ensure that indeed they are globally competitive, that they cannot only speak English but at the same time deliver it well and be with be at par with the global standards. So try hence try focal approach. Yet it will not end there. Uh, you you also have there futures thinking. Now you might ask, what's futures thinking? Futures thinking is actually a bus term in the Philippines. Okay. We all know that we, we well, we, we, all of us experienced the pandemic, right? Uh, we were devastated by it. Unforeseeable foe, right? Um, even the educational system, we experienced that. Everything stopped, right, because of the pandemic. And the idea of futures thinking is, from the words of future, we need, we need to think of strategies, things, to ensure that our students the way that they do now will be beneficial three to five years from now. So, in other words, with the trifocal approach that I'm going to discuss this afternoon, what are the different activities, okay, to ensure that these things, okay, will make sure that our graduates will benefit three to five years from now. That means the aspect of sustainability. It's not just about giving you information or giving you instruction. Giving, giving you the things that we need to provide as teachers, that the Faculty of Education uh, needs to give you. It's about thinking of the things that we need to give you, wherein you will benefit and um, gain something from it three or five years from now. Hence, the idea of futures thinking. Why is it that I involve futures thinking? It's because of the pandemic. We were all caught off guard by it, right? And we need to talk about the things that matter, especially the things that we do in order to mitigate whatever the things that we might experience later on, right? I was corrected by one faculty when I said, in order to prevent pandemic, because we cannot really prevent pandemic, right? We can only mitigate it. And that's the beauty about discussing futures thinking. This is actually mandate, uh, a mandate to us in higher education to discuss about the things that we can provide to our students in order to mitigate um, unwanted things or unwanted, uh, yeah, unwanted things that might happen, okay? Now, going back, all these things that I mentioned geared toward uh, addressing the gaps during the pandemic and for us to explore possibilities of new realities and uncertainties. Now, you might ask me again, sir, what do you mean by new realities? Actually, it's common or it's synonymous with the word new normal. And I believe you are aware of the term, right? That's not new to you. Uh, new normal, are you aware of the new normal? The, the, the best term that came after the pandemic, right? We, we are also corrected by the term. We should not call it new normal. Instead, we should call it new realities. What's the reason? I am on a language side now. We have here Dr. Imam, right, sir? Uh, 
uh, he is uh, the, the, the postgraduate dean in, in, in linguistics or in language, if I'm not mistaken, right, sir? Yeah, language teaching. So instead of using new normal, we should adopt the term new realities. So what's the reason? It's because normal is relative. What is normal to Dr. Imam might be different from what is normal to me. And what is normal to Dr. Jeanette might be different from another person. Hence, instead of using the word new normal, we need to adopt the term new realities because we're talking about the things happening, the truth of what is happening. Okay? Hence, new realities and uncertainties because it's not just about uh, realities. We need to talk about uncertainties, the things that we don't know yet. Hence, you have their futures thinking that will address whatever the issues left by the pandemic and at the same time to talk about the new realities and uncertainties. And I hope this afternoon you learned something with my discussion. And I repeat, this will be a collaborative discussion because I will be asking uh, feedback coming, of course, from the Faculty of Education. Okay? By the way, as what I mentioned, this is uh, a research proposal. I have with me my uh, another uh, project leader, research project leader, Dr. Charlie P. Nakario, a professor. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I hope you can still see the, the, the framework there. So in the lower circle, the, the smallest circle, you can see there quality standard. And I believe all of you students here can relate. Why? Because your professors require high standards from you. Am I right? Am I right? It's too silent. Am I right? <laughs> Sir, what are the indicators that our professors require high standards? With a lot of demands being asked from you, right? From assignment to projects to thesis to different works that you need to submit with, uh, within uh, a limited period of time, right? I know you all have silent narratives. Don't be shy. That's okay. We need to talk about it, okay? And I believe this is also something non-negotiable, okay? I understand on a teacher's perspective that as a faculty, as a teacher, we really need to impose a quality standards to our students, much more to, to, to the clientele. Why? Because we are talking about UNRAM, right? We're talking about CBSUA. We stand by the name. You cannot call it UNRAM that provides quality learning if we will not impose quality standards. The same thing in our university. That's why I told you our hearts beat as one. Because once we talk about the quality services that we provide to our uh, clientele, to our students, we do the same. We might be different in culture, in language, but with the quality services that we provide, we are one. Okay? And that is something, again, non-negotiable. Then you also have there, Then the second circle, the ASEAN integration. The ASEAN integration, which means stricter, stricter qualification, most especially to those students under teacher education training, right? We are not just being boxed at UNRAM. I, I believe that all of you will agree, even the teachers. Uh, due to the ASEAN integration, we need to be not only ASEAN, uh, our persp uh, perspective must be within ASEAN framework only, but at the same time to be globally competitive, to be at par with the standards being set by, by the global, uh, uh, global education, right? And because of ASEAN integration, aside from the quality standards being imposed by the university, a lot of things will be demanded from us. Number one, in talking about ASEAN integration, you need to speak fluently in English. I believe all of you here are, uh, your, your field of concentration is English. Am I right? All of you, right? So I guess we have a common ground, right? And I, I, I also believe that with this particular requirement that you need to speak the language, English language, as a common ground for us to understand each other 
that's one of um, the stringent requirements being asked in ASEAN integration, a common ground to understand each other, and that is our ability to speak English fluently. Okay? Um, in our case, English is our second language, Philippines, ESL, English as a second language. I believe in Indonesia, English is EFL to you, English as a foreign language. But you know what? When my 10 students went to see the SUA, this is the only thing I told to my students when they, when they joined my classes. I told them, do not treat these people as different from you. Because even though their English is EFL, they are just as good as you. Okay? And that is something that I would like to stress to all the faculty members, even to the students here. Never ever try to discredit, okay, uh, where you came from just because you speak a different language or just because you speak EFL and not ESL. Because as to the delivery, as to our knowledge, we are just all equals. And I hope you inculcate that to your minds. And you said your, your concentration is English. Do not think that you are better than anyone else, okay? Uh, even to your uh, Indonesian counterpart. Do not think that you are better just because you can speak English. Use that as a platform in order to disseminate information, to disseminate knowledge, and not for you to feel good about it. Are we clear about that? Uh, about it? Good. Okay. Now, third circle. The SUC leveling and compliance to uh, shared academic excellence. I'm talking about our experience at CBSA. You know what? Uh, the same at Tunram, we're always being, being, being measured about, part, about a particular indicator, about particular, particular leveling. I don't know at Unram how you are being measured or being, being, being assessed, sir, by, 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 the, by the national government. Are you being assessed by the national government? Because it depends, right? The, the budget depends also to, to, to the leveling. Is it the same with, with us? Surveillance. Yeah. Yeah. Very stressful. That's true. And I, I think we have a common, common, common experience about it, a shared experience. Um, we really need to abide with the standards being set to us by the Commission on Higher Education. That's the national um, uh, agency that, that assesses and evaluates our programs. And, well, good thing with, with the efforts and labors of the people of CBSUA, we are SUC level 4. That, that is the highest, okay? Highest uh, level being provided to a state university. And I think we owe that also to our leaders. And I believe UNRAM also is, uh, because it was discussed during our roundtable discussion at the postgraduate uh, um, room or lecture room, it was discussed there that uh, uh, the national government of Indonesia also imposes stricter qualification, right? When it comes to, to the programs being offered. Okay. Now, let's talk about the CDE and COEs. CD stands for Center of Development Education and Center of Excellence, okay? In our case, the teacher education is Center of Development. What does it mean? For you to be a Center of Development, uh, that means you are providing quality education to the learners, okay? At CBSUA, there are two Center of Excellence. One is in agriculture, and there is another, another, uh, another, another program. Uh, the College of Education, in our case, is Center of Development. That means we provide quality education to, to the learners regardless of the field of concentration. Next is uh, the mandates among teacher education institutions. Aside from stricter qualification, um, a lot of assessment. Okay, a lot of assessment is being conducted in order to ensure that we provide, we, we abide to the things being required from us. Now, the last is the CBSUA CDE roles. What does CDE mean? It means College of Development Education, the counterpart of uh, your faculty here. Okay, and 
in order to meet all those things I mentioned, the different circles, we need to abide those qualifications, those quality standards. Because our number one goal is to become an agricultural research university of global standards. I believe your, your, your motto here is UNRAM, the home of um, ho um, change makers. Am I right? Is that your, your, your motto here? Uh, UNRAM, the home of change makers. I heard it from Dr. Zanet when we had our meeting, right? UNRAM, the home of change makers. If that is your motto, tagline, our tagline is, uh, at the same time, our goal to become an agricultural research university of global standards. How do we do that? We need to observe all of those things. A lot of things being demanded from us. One of your faculty, uh, one of the teachers mentioned it. It gives him a lot of headache, right? But these are the things we do for you. Okay? Next slide. Now, this is the big however. So, however, when the pandemic um, strikes, the closure of schools and social isolation significantly affect the educational system, and I, I believe all of you will agree, especially the deliveries to ensure quality education. As what I mentioned a while ago, we were all caught off guard, right? And these are the three things being required from us, from all of us. One, how to adapt to remote teaching. Second, to rapidly adapt to new context of teaching and learning online. And lastly, the challenges and opportunities to carry on the job in such unexpected circumstances. And if you, if you find it difficult to, to do the online classes, much more to us teachers. Just imagine all the tasks uh, we, we carry, right? So we need to learn how to do things, to, to, to do Zoom meetings, G meetings, all the platforms, right? Especially the senior lecturers, okay? So these are the things being demanded from us because of the pandemic. Next slide. It is because of this context that um, emphasis should be placed on teaching and learning pedagogical issues which I believe the Faculty of Education should discuss about. COVID-19 raises questions about the nature of teaching and ways to support student teachers, uh, student teachers learning. It also challenges teacher education to rethink ways or of re-educating teachers for unpredictable and unknown scenarios. Hence, the so-called Next, the so-called futures thinking, okay? As I mentioned it a while ago, we need to rethink ways, reimagine ways on how we can provide quality services, quality teaching and learning to all of you. And um, that's why I, I, again, let me just reiterate this one. Uh, I, I will be asking some feedback, okay, from, from, from the faculty members here regarding their experiences. In that way, we can learn. After all, learning is a two-way process. Next slide. So with such an unprecedented event that caused the educational system to dwindle, thorough research must be conducted regarding the effects of the pandemic on teacher education and the quality of teaching learning as a whole. With that, we created this particular program, research program, CBSUA Teacher Education's trifocal approach to quality teaching learning and futures thinking, addressing the gaps during the pandemic and exploring possibilities of new realities and uncertainties. We have the following objectives. Next slide. One, to intensify the teacher education student admission strategies at the, uh, in the new realities. Second, 
to provide and at the same time assess quality teaching learning spaces in the new educational landscape. Third, anticipate the future possibilities of new realities. And lastly, is to develop and validate teachers' education manual, our main goal, which will serve as a reference, of course, for future ready graduates in the new realities and uncertainties. Next slide. Now, now why trifocal? I mentioned this already. Trifocal because we will observe three major processes. The first process talks about students' admission. How do we select the best among the rest? Okay, How do we select the students to be enrolled, to be admitted? For instance, in your faculty, in your college. Okay, After selecting the best among our students, how about the experiences that we provide to them? Hence, the second approach. Students' experience or students' experiences. And if you talk about experiences, that means your stay here at UNRAM. What are the quality teaching learning spaces being provided from uh, being provided to you? I mean, uh, in in research, in instruction, in the facilities, in the uh, in the student services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Then the last approach, making it trifocal, is the student's assurance. What do we mean by student's assurance? That before you graduate, you really have the competence required in a globally competitive arena, that you can deliver well. If we talk about English concentration, that you cannot just speak fluently English, but you can deliver. And you can stand in a podium, deliver something, communicate with other people fluently. Okay? Hence, trifocal approach. This is actually a seamless process. Why seamless process? Because we believe right from the start of admitting our students, we need to carefully select our students. And upon selecting our students, that means still uh, a competitive, perhaps competitive test in order to identify students who will qualify for admission. And upon qualifying, we need to provide the quality teaching learning to them. That means the services that we provide, students' experience. Then we need to provide, okay, at the last stage, making or ensuring that our students are indeed globally competitive. Okay? Next slide. It has three major, major uh, projects. This one, uh, the project, project one, uh, Again, this is research, okay? Project one is titled Intensifying Teacher Education Student Admission Strategies in New Realities. I have here uh, Sir Professor Charlie P. Nacario, the, the, the first study leader, and we have three major studies. That means um, uh, what the first study is Development and Validation of LET. LET is actually the national uh, assessment, the national exam being given to um, students, for you to qualify, I mean to, to professionals, for you to qualify in the teaching field, okay? Study two, aspirations in enablers of senior high school honor students to pursue teacher education courses. We also have study three, policy research on incentivizing teacher education honor enrolls, okay? Next slide. That one, quite, quite a lot. So the second approach talks about students' experience. You may see there are different components. Again, that means the things we provide to our students. A lot of studies. And we have a lot of uh, research leaders also. Uh, examples of the studies are, for component one, uh, curriculum and instruction. We, we, we will be conducting several studies about curriculum and instruction. Component two, the faculty. Uh, for instance, um, how about the teaching, uh, the assessment of teaching workload for efficacy and productivity of the faculty? Uh, upskilling teachers' competence in the new educational landscape. They are, these are some sample studies. For component three, we have support to students. Component four, physical and laboratory facilities. So all these co components will make sure that we provide quality teaching learning to our students. 
Then the third study, I mean third approach, next slide, will be about students' assurance. So sample studies are anticipating the future possibilities of new realities. These are some uh, sample studies assessing skill sets and competencies of teacher education graduates to be future ready, providing interventions in creating a value for new realities and uncertainties, and taking responsibility for future ready teacher education graduates. Then the last one, next slide, the project four, still under student's assurance, anticipating the future possibilities of new realities. Hence, we have futures thinking. So we have three sample studies there, assessing skill sets and competencies of teacher education graduates to be future ready, providing interventions and creating, uh, sorry, validation of teacher's education manual for future ready graduates in the new realities. Then the last one, advocacy promotion and dissemination of teacher's education manual for future ready graduates in the new realities. Again, these things are research proposals. Why are we doing this? Why did we come up with such, with these different studies? All these things are geared towards providing quality teaching learning spaces, quality teaching learning intended solely for all of you. With that, thank you so much. If you have some questions or clarifications that you would like to share, uh, I will be glad to, to answer your questions. Again, um, I, I would love to hear feedback, okay? Feedback from you, particularly the experiences. Perhaps, on the students' perspectives, at the same time from the faculty's pers uh, perspectives, and we can share our experiences. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Darrell, for a very uh, beneficial presentation of the lecture. Now, I would like to draw our attention to a very important um, point there. Um, first, it's about the admission process. So if we're going to have a conversation about our admission process, do we select the students in the English teacher education program? Do we select them specific for those who want to be a teacher? No? Okay. Or do we have some kinds of essay saying that I want to get into this university or this faculty because I have like compassion for education? Okay. Do we have a specific English requirement? No? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's the admission. And then um, are we expected to graduate with certain score of TOEFL? And do we know why? Okay, right. So this is what we want to have a conversation first. I think it is, um, I know with the, with the pandemic things are changing, right? So is, is it because of the pandemic we have we have to reduce the expectation or we have to let's say up the ante that's what we say in the gambling uh, no, no I'm not a gambler but I know up the ante uh, it means that increase the stake are we expected to do more or are we expected to do less because of a disaster right so I'd like to kick off with that Dr. Dadel so um, to bridge this, to bridge this conversation, we have the decision makers here, and then our dean has left, but he said something very okay. Right? Wow. Okay. How do we, how do we create? So, if our vision is to be internationally recognized university, you know that, right? By twenty and twenty-five, we will be global standards university. What does that mean to be global standards? What does it mean? All right. So the question here is then, um, what's the CBSUA's 
experience in making themselves globally accredited in terms of first making the standards right and then second specifically to the language requirement to be global all right take it away hello those are very good points okay so actually this is a research proposal and those uh, things that you mentioned are the things that we are also expecting because funny thing in our very own university um, we are not really observing those things yet hence the creation the submission of this proposal because we would like to study okay uh, we would like to propose the idea that it must be a seamless process you mentioned that UNRAM uh, you provide TOEFL examination as a requirement for graduation, right? But you didn't have um, essay questions or perhaps things uh, when it comes to admission. And that is exactly the thing that this study would like to stress out, that it must be a seamless process, that right from the start of admission, it must be synchronized on how we provide things to our students. If you will be providing assessments such as essay or things about language assessment or things that uh, are related to TOEFL examination, then you can see there the synchronization. Right from the start of student admission, you experience there things that are quite similar on how TOEFL is being conducted. Okay? Then with the student admission selecting the best among the students, we provide teaching and learning spaces. We provide teaching and learning strategies or methods in terms of instruction, in terms of assessment, in terms of the different activities we provide to our students to make sure that we are cultivating students who are globally competitive at par with the global standards. Then students' assurance will be the third approach that with the TOEFL examination, for instance, they can you know, um, pass the examination and um, let them um, make sure that indeed they are carrying the competencies required in the global arena. That's exactly the, the, the essence of trifocal approach, a seamless process. Now, going back to your question, how, what are the things we do in, in CBSUA? Uh, we actually have a general examination. Again, quote and quote, general examination. There is no particular um, examination intended, for instance, a science major, an English major. There is no field of concentration. A general admission and perhaps it has something to do also with the selection and that is the thing that we we are trying to uh, to, to, to to target with this particular proposal uh, that that we came up with yep it's it's almost the same right if I may engage um, our senior gentleman here like we have the same general admission in a way that we don't specify the entrance like if you apply for chemistry education major you're not going to be tested specific to the chemistry right okay so so i don't know please everybody here in the audience do you think that we have to do that in order to get the best of the input because sometimes the problem is not always the graduate it's the problem of the input we don't get so here's the thing in international schools People will say, wow, their graduates, the alumni are so, so smart. Yes, they're already smart from the first year. Okay, and then we have a problem with the village schools. We know that their literacy is at that level. So please have a conversation here. Do you think that we should specify the entrance, like the general? Uh, if you're going to ask me personally, uh, in the first approach, we have a particular study that will try to make such a thing, mm -hmm. specialization when it comes to exam. Especially if a student would like to have a concentration in a particular field, then there must be a, 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 an examination specifically designed for that particular field of concentration. That would be a nice idea. Yes. Maybe costly. Maybe it will be costly. So we would like to invite your opinion, uh, uh, Dr. Amin and Dr. Imam, on this, like uh, the need 
for improving our admission process. Uh, thank you very much. Again, my name is Amin. Uh, Dr. Darrell, um, your proposal seems to be very interesting, but really um, I've got some questions in mind regarding your research, whether your intent is to find the current and past realities of the three uh, four sciences we have, or whether then you are going to find out what is currently practiced, yeah, and then what has been practiced, and then to find out and give later recommendations based on the theories about what should be done in order to improve uh, the quality of the three things you want to do in your research. So that, that, that's the question regarding to your um, proposal. And the question from Mr. Junet, yeah, and that's very interesting. Um, I think, in my opinion, there should be kind of tests, uh, a kind of examination in order to find out whether the people who are going to enroll, let's say, in the teacher education faculty are, are really interested in becoming a teacher, okay? Because many of them are not really interested in studying here, but they ended up here. Yeah? They don't know. Very many of them, we, they we don't can, know why do the they survey end, now. Yep. <laughs> end up here studying here. Even if I may say that um, that is one of my recommendations when I did my doctoral study, that um, an English teacher before, being, uh, before working yeah, as a teacher, they should have a kind of qualifications, for example, the um, language proficiency level, or something like that. But until now, frankly speaking, there is no, yeah, no kind, no such kind of test um, before you are being uh, employed as a teacher. So I think that's quite complicated. Uh, coming back to the admission, so once, together with Santi, we propose to conduct a kind of interview, short interview with the candidates, yeah, with the high. Um, school graduates who want to enroll in our faculty, in our English department, in order to find out more about um, these candidates. Yeah. But again, so there are some obstacles, one of which I think is fun. Yeah, It's all about money. You can imagine if you have to interview all the um, students, and it's going to take too long, and it's going to cost a bit more. So there are several other things that we need to consider. Thank you, Dr. Tara. Thank you so much, Dr. Amin. I would like to capture the term. Perhaps uh, that's true. Uh, one of the issues that might arise, particularly in admission and creating a specific uh, design for each field of specialization, will be the aspect of practicality. Mm -hmm. right? It might it might sound not practical, but my our point here, and I hope uh, it will create a positive result because this is just a proposal. Um, we are really hoping to see the, the seamless alignment. The, that from the moment you you, you provide um, a specific or a specific or or, or uh, uh, an assessment specifically designed to a field of specialization, you can really sift through those who are qualified in that particular field of specialization. Uh, it's more of the idea of cultivating the student to make sure that down the line of the end of her her course for fourth year. Uh, she possesses or he possesses already the competencies required for him to be globally competitive. That's, mm -hmm. that's the point. And, uh, but that's, that, that's true. One aspect that we need to uh, make sure also about this one, we need to look forward to, is the aspect of practicality, which I also understand, provided that we at CBSUA is also a public university. Yep. Oh well, if we can have money for birthday celebration of university, we can have the money for the interview. Yeah. But I don't want to lose that birthday celebration, though. So. I mean, it's still nice to have that, and I think CBSUA is a very, very celebrative university. I think you're having party for one month. Yeah, we have a lot of festivities. Festivities. <laughs> yes. Okay. I open the floor for questions and especially stories yeah i would like to i would love to hear uh, experiences coming from the students your experience back during your admission the experiences that you have right now as students 
And perhaps you also have here students who are already fourth year. The things that you do to make sure that you will qualify for graduation. You're Again, this yeah. research proposal is intended for you. Okay. And then we have a comment uh, from uh, Dr. Imam here. Uh, thank you, uh, Sir Junet. It's actually a question. It's a question. Uh, yeah. In the last five years, we uh, nearly all of the people at the university very surprised of the speed of industrial development, particularly in information and technology, that we market with the industrial era 4.0. And then some countries are very panic, was very panic, including Indonesia. <laughs> then we appointed uh, the first Decacon in Asia to become the Minister of Education in Indonesia. And he made many <laughs> extreme, extreme what, uh, changing, including what is written in the, on the, on the, what do you call it? Uh, campus best. Merdeka. <laughs> uh, the students are a lot to do anything outside of the campus for 20 credit semester. It could be uh, intensive in industry on their choice whether it's related to the dis discipline or not, doesn't matter could be studying in other universities, no matter whether it's related to their studies in the campus or not. So it is really extreme in Indonesia. My question is, what happened in the Philippines? Do you also experience a very drastic development or changing in the education policy, I mean national policy, or do you, I mean, the Philippines just do the business as usual. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Imam. Right. Uh, actually, uh, the state universities, I mean, the different universities in the Philippines were actually regulated by the Commission on Higher Education. The Commission on Higher Education is actually the agency um, responsible for monitoring and evaluating the performances of the different uh, universities in our in our, in the Philippines, and we abide with with the law. Okay, we abide with the law. If there are conflicts, uh, there is actually someone, or there there is actually an agency which serves as negotiator. So I think on that particular aspect, um, we go in terms business as usual, as you said a while ago. And we observe the things being provided or being being given to us by, by by the national government. After all, our budget comes from the national national uh, government. And as a matter of fact, these students actually uh, they don't pay tuition fees because in in the Philippine government, students um, tertiary education is free if you are studying in public universities. Our students, the 10 students, they do not uh, pay for their tuition. It's the government who pays for them, okay? Only in public universities. You might be happy about it, right? But on our part, the faculty, they ask a lot of demands. That's why we need to keep with the leveling. As you see leveling, internationalization, being at par with the global standards, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's the bad side uh, of you know, asking, asking budget from the government because uh, the tendency is a lot of works and the burden are given to the faculty, those who are rank and file. Mm -hmm. The administration, of course, will manage, but the one who will do the dirty works are the ones at the, at the bottom part, we, the faculty. But you know what? Uh, all these things, this might sound challenges, but I believe if your heart is for the students and your heart is for teaching, Nothing is impossible, and you can do you can do all all of these things if you have 
uh, a nice goal in mind. Uh, might might sound idealistic, but that's that's the that's that's the uh, the uh, the challenge, and at the same time, the call given to us as teachers. And the same principle must be given also to those who would love to become teachers someday. There is no profit in teaching, but there is more that you can gain after serving your students. And I can assure you of that. Wonderful. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think we should celebrate both of our university's goals in improving the quality of education. We should celebrate it with a big applause now. Um, I'd like to invite more questions from the students. I know the students here are not just the students from the undergrad degree. Some postgrad students are here also the present. Um, you can ask questions, uh, anything, maybe t sharing story or um, your experience as Dr. Darrell um, expressed uh, earlier. But just a quick question on the structure of the curriculum in your department. Do you have a lot of linguistics-based courses? Mm -hmm. uh, not really in linguistics. Those are, linguistics is actually part of the curriculum, but not a field of concentration. Okay. It's more of lang uh, English language education, more of teaching, how to teach English. That's mm -hmm. it. So you but not really a concentration in linguistics, though Linguistic, linguistics is actually uh, a subject, a but subset. not as a field of concentration. I know, but do you have like semantics, pragmatics? Yes, uh, that's part of the curriculum. One unit or it's... Uh, it's, it's a separate, uh, a separate mean, it's, subject. It's, okay, so it's a subject. Yes, a subject. It's a subject. Would you say that it uh, comprised uh, uh, like fifth, uh, 16 credits or...? Uh, three units only. Three units. Per subject, yes. Three units per subject. Oh, well, okay. Yep. All right, so also linguistics as well, and also literature. Yeah, we also have literature, combination mm -hmm. of language, languages and literature. Linguistics is actually under language education. We also have literature, Philippine literature, American literature. Okay, okay, yes, right. Still inviting the questions from everyone? Perhaps you, if you don't want to, share, uh, to ask questions, share your experience. Yep. Sharing experience of learning, of interacting with the lecturers, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have the mic. Mic. Okay. No. Okay. By the way, if I may add, you know what? I am very happy with my ten students who came from from Indonesia, because I even mentioned this to Doctor Santi when we had our informal conversation, I told her, you didn't fail in sending those 10 students because they are really, really good, okay? And when I, when I joined them to, 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 my, to my classes, I even informed my students, you now have competitors. And in my class, I love healthy competition, okay? I, I, I promote healthy competition and um, I said to Dr. Santi, you didn't fail in sending these students because they are really, really good. I, um, I know that your, your English is EFL, but then they can really speak well, okay? And they can really um, deliver the task being given to them. On the top of it, you know what? The most important thing, aside from technicalities, aside from being fluent in English, is the character. And that is the ultimate thing that I love about your students from UNRAM because I saw the character, the, the, the values that they have. They're very silent, okay, very timid. But when, uh, once I ask them to share something, to deliver a task, they can even exceed my own expectations. And that is what I love about your UNRAM students. And with that, I think you also need to celebrate, <laughs> okay, the, the, the good achievements that they receive, okay, because they are very good and at the same time of good character. Well, th that comes with a question. Do you want to go to the Philippines next year? We will, do a we will do a selection process, okay? Dr. Imam will be with me in the selection process. I was the interviewer uh, and then we did have a group, a pool of um, 
of candidates and then we just okay we're, we're just gonna go with these students um and then the development it doesn't happen in the first day it happens along the way so they learn for example if you lose your baggage in singapore in changi airport it's a huge airport you have to talk to the security guard right that's how you learn the authentic english of making arguments <laughs> yeah so so the this actual learning really adds to the point of this kind of student exchange so i will encourage you to apply next year on the international credit transfer program so you can feel the uh the feel really the the philippines and not just the philippines maybe we can have international credit transfer program to other countries as well okay let's say i'm into that i mean yeah. <laughs> and then oh yeah i'm really expecting it and then oh let, let me let me say this if you get that ictp program when you apply for postgraduate scholarships like besiswa is dua it's gonna be easier why because the scholarship giver will know that you have the experience of learning in an in international setting. So that's why it's not just the ICTP, it's the continuation of the ICTP. And I think ICTP is, will be a very good uh, section. It's an addition to an uh, undergraduate program. And there will be a question about joint degree as well. So you can study two years in the Philippines and two years in UNRAM. And then maybe your title will not be SPD or Sajarna Pendidikan, Sarjana Pendidikan, but maybe the Bachelor of Education, which is B.ED, your yes. degree, right? Yes. yes. B.ED. That's an international teacher certification. And yes. who knows, you might become a future teacher in the Philippines, right? Wow, okay. I would love to do that. Oh, I am now. I'm teaching. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, hello, my student. <laughs> All right, so, um, well, if you cannot ask questions now, yes, we have a question there. Wow, okay. I will remember your name if you do, uh, if you join this election next year. Seriously, I'm just going to take your name. So, my name is Angraini. I am a second student second semester of English education department so my question is from the last slide uh, it's getting attention of the COVID-19 rises of questions so based on my uh, experience when I was a senior high school that is getting the it got the COVID-19 spread and well how the teacher got the and how the student to raise the questions while in the my experience the student did not get uh, did not ask many questions to the teachers so question is did the student really raise a question no, can I can I clarify something there? Uh, so, uh, is the question: Do uh, the students ask questions to the the teacher while the uh, the when they learn? Oh, like okay. A Zoom meeting, like we have a, an In online meeting. In a Zoom meet meeting. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Do and how the teacher get to know that the student really get interested to the to the to the material yeah like that yeah because we don't turn on the video and yeah. okay right cool <laughs> my yeah. it's a very nice uh, observation actually in the philippines especially cbsua we had this we have because we, we are still using it we have this uh platform called vlp okay vlp is actually an online platform a software created by our university where we can actually interact with our students. So the usual thing of online class, or in, for instance, if I am discussing something, 
And uh, the students are allowed to ask questions. There's actually an interaction. It's actually possible in, in an online class. Whether it is via Zoom or Google Meeting, the students are actually allowed to ask questions, especially if they want to clarify something. It happens during synchronous discussion. And I know that you are aware of the synchronous discussion. Synchronous discussion happens when there is a teacher through online and the students attend the class. Okay? After discussing the lesson, the teacher will ask, do you have questions? Okay? And that's the time that the students will uh, raise uh, their virtual hands. And we, we need to recognize those students in order to clarify their questions. That's actually the dynamics on how we do online classes. But now, uh, we do face-to-face -face lessons in the Philippines. But before, uh, especially during pandemic, when we do online class, there is actually an interaction. The students are allowed to ask questions, and the teachers recognize uh, the students because uh, we have the so-called virtual hands where you can raise your question, and once you are recognized, it's time that you can ask or raise your question. The same thing I think that you all, you also do here at UNRAM, right? You also have online class, right? Yep. And during discussion, perhaps the teacher will ask uh, clarifications. I think you can also clarify things, right? The same dynamics in the Philippines. Okay. Right. Um, it's always a, a challenge, right? I mean, when, when, I'm, when I'm in front of an online uh, class, my expectation is for the students to show um, curiosity or um, like compassion, you know, or no, no like uh, excitement, I would say, excitement, right? Excitement. We want you to be excited, yes? But my question, is the excitement something that have to come from you or is it our task to make you excited. Do you have to be excited yourself or is it our responsibility, teacher's responsibility to make the students excited? Okay, raise your hand if you believe it is teacher's responsibility. Okay. Raise your hand if you believe that it should come from the students first. See? This is the problem with motivation. Is motivation internally from somebody or motivation is created by the external factors like the teachers? Maybe we can ask that in a research question about motivation. All right. So, now, uh, the last... I'm sorry, I have to ask your name, uh, the, the person who asked question, please. What's your name? An? Angraini. Um, boleh name-nya? E satu D. Uh-huh. Kosong dua dua. Kosong dua dua. Kosong lima sembilan. I just take a note, I just, I just took a note of um, her name and her student number all right we need a next student see this is what is called motivation external motivation the external motivation when you see something you want to achieve it okay right now let me do you have a question raise your hand if you have a question yes please this, this. Okay. Um, my name is Baru Hadi. I'm a student from English department from fourth semester. So my question is, because we have a duty to teach people to learn English because we are uh, want to be a teacher, is it hard to uh, learn English for uh, as a second language? I mean, because in Indonesia, yeah, in Philippines, because in Indonesia. English is a foreign language, right? So it's um, a little bit difficult to uh, find an environment to support in, to support us to practice our English or to learn English. So that's a nice that's question. It. That's a nice question. Uh, I mentioned that in, in the Philippines, 
English is actually our second language, ESL. And ESL that it is, it is really part of the curricul uh, curriculum right from the beginning. Uh, kinder, elementary, junior high school, senior high school, tertiary education, that's part of the curriculum. It is being taught to us. That's why even vendors, if, uh, if you go to, to the Philippines, even vendors who didn't finish their high school or even uh, college or even high school, they can speak English. They can understand you if, if you speak to them in English. Padagang, okay? padagang di kaburuhi niya. Yeah. Berbahasa Inggris. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I also understand if you will tell me that as Indonesian, uh, you find it difficult to speak English because that's EFL to you, right? And I believe that's not really integrated in the curriculum. Right, sir? Uh, unless you will have a concentration to it, that's the time that you can learn fully the English language, right? But you know what? This is what I always tell to my students, which I mentioned a while ago. Them being English majors don't speak about their ability to, to speak it fluently. Um, for as long as they can, they can uh, I always tell them, uh, you are privileged enough to become English teachers. And I hope it, must, uh, it, it should start from you. To let other people know that English is only a medium of communication and that a measure of intelligence. So I hope you remove that, that kind of thinking that if a person speaks fluently in English, that person is smart already. Of course not. Because in the Philippines, we have that misconception, okay? That if a person in the Philippines speaks fluently in English, that person is smart and intelligent, okay? That's the misconception about speaking English. And you, if you will become English teachers, please remove that kind of stereotyping, that kind of thinking, okay? English is merely a medium for communication and should never be a yardstick to measure one's intelligence, okay? And I think it, there is no problem even if your, your, your English is EFL, okay? For as long as you can deliver, you can communicate and express yourself well, there is no problem about it. Okay, right. So uh, one thing that I take from that is that um, if you speak good English, it means you're smart. The first thing you have to do is to define smart and define good English. Okay, so it's just a quick uh, comment uh, on that. But we do have the influence of linguistic ability to social status, right? We study this in social linguistics. So if you speak a very good British accent, okay, for example, and then maybe you look like you're so uncultured, right? Okay. So, yeah, so that's a quick comment. Please, next, please. Mm. I see. Okay, no, 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 I think we go to the back. Uh, Bahrul Hadi, I need your student's n number after this one. Oh, no, no. After that, after that. Yes, please. Yep. Uh, yep. Hi, my name is Aisha. I actually have two questions. I have two questions. Okay. Which one? All right, so yes, uh, we will. Right, okay. Okay, so you mentioned that linguistic is part of Philippines curriculum. And my question is, uh, what language? It, because you also mentioned that English is second language in Philippines. Uh, is it the linguist? Uh, mm -hmm. Is uh, the linguistic only in Tagalog or it's also in English? And uh, at what grade uh, did people in Philippines learn to speak English? I think that's all. Okay, so uh, English is our second language. Our first language is what we call mother tongue. Okay, the mother tongue. And our mother tongue differs from one region to another or in your place from one island to another. In our case... Bicol is our mother tongue. Our national language is Tagalog or Filipino. Okay? 
And our second language definitely is English. And if you will ask, sir, what, what, in what year does English is, uh, in what year is English integrated? Uh, it is integrated as early as kindergarten. So that means five years old, English is being taught to us. As so, Jack Pekka. Even, not, 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 not actually five. Uh, even to, to one to two years old, we're already being taught inside, inside, inside. Uh, the family. Inside, yes. Mm -hmm. by, by the parents. Instead of teaching us our first language, they would love, because uh, the, the minds of Filipinos are too Western. Uh, Sir, Sir Jeanette is correct in telling that it has something to do with social linguistics, how society dictates our culture, right? And in the Philippines, um, we are too Western in terms of thinking. But you know what? There's also a bad side about it. Okay. Yes. So, uh, um, uh, what year, at what year, like what grade do we start learning English? Some of you in primary? At middle school because it is uh, a peer on national exam. I think everyone in middle school uh, has learned English. Okay, yeah, in middle school. But that for how many hours per week? Two? Just one? Like in total, I'm not talking about the jump pelajaran. I'm talking like the actual time. An hour, two hour, maybe. Okay, yeah. So we cannot say that we studied that like very intensively. So we have only like maximum two hours of English per week, and then it has something to do with the quality of the English teachers and also who we speak to. So in the Philippines, one thing that I noticed: if you go to a school. It's not sekolah dasar, madrasah, sanawiyah. It's actually all written in English, so it's very, very like um, immersed in 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 the language. Yes, and we would like to inform everyone here that the CBSUA is offering a training for the lecturers of Unram to. And we, we also offer English lessons as well for the students. If you want to have a conversation, if you want to, to have some like, you know, like discussion class in English, I and Sir Darrell, we like to be engaged in like some conversations, you know, like what's happening with the world and all that. If you want to join that one, we can, we can actually 